This is going to be a video that will hopefully answer as many questions as possible that you guys might have for Broken Arrow. If you guys have anything left, come by the stream. I'm probably live right now. If you're watching this the day that it was posted, if you're watching this the day that the open beta has started, I'm going to be live on Twitch. Also, check out the video that I posted earlier today. That's on this channel. I'll link it in the description. Hopefully, that'll answer any other questions that you guys might have. It's a very advanced game. There's a lot of stuff going on. If you're coming from War Game, there's a lot of changes. It's not just War Game, but better there's i mean i mean it is but there is a lot here genuinely so first things first join a discord whether it is the official broken arrow discord or my discord find somebody to play with find people that you can actually communicate to in discord so that you can plan and coordinate with so that it works better for your games also if you have questions about units and stuff like that it's just it's just better that way so join one of those discords understanding air combat there's supersonic jets you can change the speed at which your jets are flying flares are very effective and they also have a limit so you need to watch out for those low level flight is effective at hiding and it's just effective for getting away from the aa that's shooting at you laser designated rounds bombing runs strafing runs pilots and fuel is all something that you need to keep in mind air power in general you can use it as a parachute for mistakes that you make and know that if you make somebody else make a mistake or if you really make a big push or something like that, it's very powerful. People are going to use it against you. So be prepared for that. So supersonic jets, you can use the afterburners. That's the icon right there. Flares, make sure that you have some left and try and run them out of their flares in order to shoot them down quicker or more effectively. Again, that's the icon right there. Low level flight, you can hide and you can get away from AA that's shooting at you because the train actually matters. Your missiles don't go through mountains in this game. Uh, you know, cough, cough, war game. So that's the icon there to be able to drop it. You also have a hotkey of V. All of these things you can set to hotkeys if you would like in settings. Laser designated targets, that's for laser designation bombs. Um, some planes can laser designate their own targets. Otherwise, you're going to need to use re uh, recon units that can laze a target for you. And then you can come in, you can drop bombs on their foreheads. Some artillery units will use laser designated rounds as well. So make sure you're checking those out when you're building your decks. Bombing runs. If you want to use a bomb, you have to use a bombing run. If you adjust it while it's on approach, it will not do it and it'll turn around. So watch out for that. Strafing runs are the same things. If you want to use heavy ATGMs and stuff like that, you're going to need to, need to do a strafing run. Luckily for strafing runs, your target doesn't need to be in the line or the column that you put on the ground. As long as it's in the general area, it will still shoot those ATGMs at it. Also, you can get lucky. Sometimes it will shoot ATGMs freely like we're used to in war game. But most of the time, in order to make sure that it works, just do a strafing run and it, and it will work as long as it doesn't get shot down. Pilots, your pilots will eject. If your plane is not going supersonic speeds, your pilot will eject and you can take that, that pilot back to base in order to recoup some of the points from the plane that you just lost. If it is going supersonic, it won't eject. Fuel is something that you need to watch out for. There's a little icon there. It's very obvious. If you run out of fuel, your plane will just blow up. It doesn't work like in war game. Your plane will just blow up and you will have your pilot eject if you are going slower than supersonic. If you are going supersonic and you run out of fuel, you also lose the pilot and the plane. So no bonus there. So make sure you get your planes back when you still have fuel. Urban combat is pretty crazy. Buildings collapse. If you have infantry in a building that collapses, it doesn't matter if you have one unit or 20, the building will collapse and kill all of your infantry in it. So for that reason, I do not stack infantry in buildings. I spread them out if I use infantry at all. Personally, I don't think, think infantry are very effective in this game. I like using the vehicles more and the vehicles that they come in as fire support more than the infantry themselves, other than heavy weapon squads, uh, man pad squads, and recon squads for infantry. You'll find out a bunch of that with uh, my streams and stuff like that. Anyway, so don't stack infantry in buildings if they are not collapsed. You can collapse the building yourself or go and find one that is collapsed or put them in tree lines. Either way, don't do that. Don't put your infantry in buildings that aren't collapsed. Era and APS are quite effective in a lot of these vehicles. However, Era for US units don't mean as much. A lot of the infantry that you're gonna be running into, the Russian infantry, use tandem ATGMs or tandem shoulder-fired launchers, which defeat Era. So it's not as effective if you're playing as US, you can leave the era at home. It's up to you. I, I tend to just use tusks anyway. I tend to just use the seps, the V3s and the V2s. So since I just use them anyway, I might as well just put the era on there anywhere. But it does make their, it doesn't make them cheaper. And some things that don't use tandem would be the cheaper ATGMs that you get fired from some of the Russian vehicles. 
that the arrow is actually going to be useful. It just, just doesn't happen to be usually at your side. So something to think of. Either way, any vehicle that you can bring APS in, bring APS with you because those will shoot ATGMs out of the sky. If you don't know what APS is, it's literally a rocket that shoots out and destroys rockets that are coming at your vehicle. But there is a limit to it, so make sure that you're using your smoke grenades that you can use with vehicles. If you're not used to seeing that, you can pop smoke and it'll hide your vehicle or conceal your vehicle so that you can run away if you need to. And uh, make sure that you're popping that if you're getting your ass kicked or if you run out of APS or if you run out of ammo so that you can go back and supply it, get the APS back, be more effective, get the smoke back and you know, good to go there. Speaking of supplies, they work differently in the games that you're probably used to. So what I do is I take a large supply unit, like a very large helicopter, and I put a big supply dump far away from the front line. And then from there, I take smaller units, whether they be smaller helicopters or smaller trucks, and then I have them take supplies out of the supply dump, which you can do by just clicking the supply dump. It will pick up as many supplies as it can carry when it's a smaller vehicles, and then you can bring those up to the front line. I do not drop supplies larger than 3000 with my units because when supplies get spotted it will obviously get hit with bombs or obviously get hit with mortars or artillery and it will blow up and it will do damage to the surrounding units so make sure you hide your supplies and make sure that you don't keep your units right on top of them because it's probably going to get hit with artillery um on that note you can get mobility kills on vehicles when you see the red wrench or the red nut icon pop up on vehicles that is a mobility kill that vehicle will not be able to move until you take supplies and drop them on that vehicle it will not move until you take supplies and drop them on that vehicle i said it there twice so that people understand what's happening there so make sure you do that or just you know have the have the unit go out in ball of fury whatever you want to do with that Recon is extremely important and we'll talk about the you know the win state of the game and stuff like that But the flanks are huge in this game So use those flanks take your recon units try and get around them try and get eyes behind them Try and figure out what planes they're bringing in to make it more effective so that you can shoot them down Or to try and get more information so you can shoot them down quicker find their artillery all that stuff Recon is extremely effective and very good in this game You can also laser targets for laser guided munitions Which there are a lot of them and they're very powerful in this game. So use your recon use it effectively some of them have the more special you know special forces infantry and stuff like that so pay attention to your recon tab use it effectively normal war game stuff past that deck creation in general those are going to be their own videos if you want to come by my streams and ask me i might be able to show you what and talk about my deck otherwise i'm going to have a video coming up in the future actually you know what i should probably probably see the dozens of videos there's gonna be lots of different videos with lots of different types of decks that i've built over the over the last week or so talking about units in this game and how i use them and stuff like that there's a large variety of units it's many hundreds of different variations and stuff like that so that's a different time but come by the stream and ask me about it but either way make sure you bring the obvious make sure you bring recon make sure you bring aa make sure you bring planes all that stuff um best of luck with that stuff because there's a lot of units and it's going to take a lot of time to like understand them all and stuff like that so understanding the win state all that matters is that you own one point you need to hold one point that's it it doesn't matter if there's eight points you hold one the enemy holds seven that means nothing as long as the game is still running you can hold one point and the enemy holds seven up until the last second of the game as long as you hold one point more than the enemy team at 0.01 seconds as in when the game ends you win there's not like it's not like conquest it's not like destruction none of that it's simply just who owns more points at the end of the game if you do you win if you have the same amount you draw if you don't you lose and if at any point doesn't matter if it's 30 seconds into the game you own all of the points or the enemy team owns all of the points you win end of the game already done so that's why you need to watch out for things like airborne rushes at the very beginning of the game you can take the um uh, the c-130s and the il-76s and you can airdrop units onto points so what you need to do is coordinate with your teammates at the beginning of every game to make sure somebody has some points saved up or just send planes out to go and see if the other team is doing that you need to do that 
every single game. If you do not have eyes out and you do not see whether or not they're doing an airdrop, that one time that you don't do it, you guarantee that's when they're going to do it. They're going to win the game in 30 seconds and it's going to be over. So make sure you have eyes out. Watch out for airborne rushes, whether they be helicopter or plane, especially the plane ones. They can end the, they can end the games very quickly. Once you get some planes out there, hopefully you can shoot down the IL-76s or the C-130s and then, the, then you know you stop that from happening. But if you can't stop it from happening, make sure you bum rush one of the points and just hold one of the points and have your ground units move through. Because for every airdrop that the, that they do, that's 250 points, at least for the plane. They're more expensive, probably uh, special forces units and stuff like that. And they're very far away from their spawn. So it's going to take a long time for them to reinforce those units. Or they're going to need to use very expensive airborne units in order to do it. Meanwhile, it's right near your spawn. So you can just, ground, you can just get ground units or quickly, more quickly, get air support to those locations. So it's a pretty easy counter. Once people realize what they're doing, they do it way less. Ground units at the beginning are way more effective than air, as long as you understand that it's possible that there could be an air rush and you're looking out for it. You can you can counter it pretty easily. RD spam is something that's pretty significant. Make sure you're moving your units around. And uh, you can also intercept cruise missiles and some of the crazier artillery like the attackums and the PRSMs um, with some of your units. The Patriots can intercept the uh the uh the uh, pivads can uh, intercept the panziers can intercept the s400s can intercept the davitsias or deravitsias whatever they're called um sa58s or whatever they're called, sa38s from war thunder those are guys that play war thunder those can intercept um the tours can intercept buck and can intercept what you're going to be looking for are on the unit cards if you see the little missile with the crosshairs around it that unit or that munition of that unit can intercept incoming rounds so it's good to do that however you need to turn your radar on in order for that to happen for most units some units can do it anyway like the Sosna, and you don't need to have your radar on but having your radar on makes units extremely effective when it comes to aa anyway so i suggest that you try to do that as much as possible just try and have eyes out to know if seeds coming in or have units ahead of your more expensive units that have radar on so that th th those cheaper units can soak up hits however there are some units and this is a plan and this is something that they're working on that can intercept not only incoming cruise missiles and stuff like that but also seed missiles and they because it's work in progress it actually snuck into a build the other day and i had a panseer with its radar on intercept a, a, a seed missile that was coming at it so that's a thing. I don't know if it's going to be in the open beta or not, which again is live today. So that's a thing. Just there's a bit more cat and mouse going on with the radar and the seed and stuff going on. Just make sure that you have something that can intercept those attackums or those PRSMs or those cruise missiles if somebody's using a T-160 because they will absolutely light your shit up. So make sure you have a counter for that by having your radar on with your intercept, uh, you know, AA stuff. Plane spam. It's just always a thing. It's always a thing that you need to worry about in all these types of games. There's lots of bombers. There's lots of, you know, unique laser designated weapons and stuff like that. If you let somebody gain air superiority, they will win the game. So you need to coordinate with your team. Make sure you're bringing effective AA. Same thing that's going to shoot down uh, incoming um, cruise missiles and stuff like that are going to be very effective against planes. The thing that I found most effective is make them use flares as soon as possible and make them keep using their flares. Stay on them. Keep shooting at them. That's the most effective way. Just oversaturate the targets. So what I've been doing recently, what I've been testing is lots of planes with R-37s when I'm Russia, S-400s in the back. And then when you're the United States, make sure you bring as many Patriots as possible. Bring some Hornets with AMRAMs and just get them out there. Get them using their flares. Get them on top of them. And uh, it's again, it's an air war. It's back and forth. It's a very, it's, it's, it's its own little mini game inside the game in itself of what's going on with the air. So that's its own thing. Good luck with that. Tank spam is extremely powerful because of the APS and the era and just tanks in general with the smoke launchers, all that stuff. They're very strong. So bring ATGMs, bring helicopters, bring um, air burst bombs or top, top, uh, top hit munitions, whether they be like the javelins and things like that. So make sure that you are building into each of your decks something that is going to be effective against SEPs and something that is going to be effective against Armadas and something that is going to be effective against T90Ms. A lot of the top attack stuff and just overwhelming ATGMs seem to work quite well. When you find them alone, take advantage of that. Kill them alone. It's going to be another five minutes before they are able to spawn another one. If they've brought multiple, sure, they can bring another one. But again, that's still five hundred, four to 500 points that they're going to waste on those units that you're going to be losing when you make that push. So watch out for tank spam. 
use what you can to eliminate those. You need to be worried about that. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully that's explained everything. And uh, hopefully I haven't lost my voice because the beta is going to start another hour or so here. If you have any other questions, drop by the stream. I'm going to be live all day today and probably tomorrow. I'm completely addicted to this game. Um, so I'm going to be posting deck videos and stuff like that. So keep, keep a lookout for those. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see you in the stream. Check out my Patreon if you're looking to support what I do here. There's going to be a lot more videos to come. And uh, I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.